When I was a kind of up and coming cyclist, there was always a sponsor that I dreamed of having. And in my case, it was Oakley. It was a tick of approval, if you like, that you'd made it in the world of cycling. Sadly for me, I never did. But today, I'm gonna to meet some of the current pros who are, in fact, sponsored by Oakley, and also the guy who's probably got the coolest job of all within cycling. He gets to travel the world, meet the pros, and give them their glasses. Let's go and meet him. So the words, the Oakley guy, have been said by plenty of sponsored athlete over the years. Now sadly, I don't know what the Oakley guy looks like or anything because I've never been in that position. But I've been told to wait here in this location and well, I'm going to get to meet them. It's kind of like a blind date really, but I just hope I don't get stood up because that could be really, really awkward. Looks like they're here. I've not been stood up. Right, let's go. So I'm here now with John O'Hale, who's the sports marketing manager for Oakley. Now, sadly, I was never a good enough cyclist to get to meet you during my career as a cyclist, but what does your job actually entail then? Yeah, so my job as the global road cycling manager is to um, set forth the strategy for our road cycling program as a whole. Um, that entails which teams we partner with, with athlete, which athletes we partner with, um, and then working on the product side as well with our product marketing team, our product development team to make sure that the athletes have the right product um, for their races and for training, and then also um, collecting the feedback from those athletes and giving it back to the team as well. And then also from a marketing side, making sure that those athletes are um, used in our, our marketing um, efforts across the board. So, cool. Yeah. That's really good to know, actually, that the feedback from a rider could well end up with us as a consumer because, well, they ride their bikes more than you yeah. or I could, could dream of, I guess. Yeah, well, they're at the pinnacle of the sport, and so what they say and what their feedback is is obviously very important to us and um, allows us to create a product that not only is good for a professional rider but also the average everyday rider. And um, most everything that we put on any of our cyclists in the world tour or anywhere else uh, is something that's available for, for sale for the normal consumer as well. So. Yeah. Okay, so where exactly are we going? Because I've got no idea I'm not local. <laughs> yeah, so we're in Harrogate here. We're going to go visit a few of the, the team hotels and uh, visit with some of the riders and make sure that they have the product that they need for the race this weekend. Cool. Now, I heard you've got a big bag of glasses and, well, I just want to see these riders' little faces light up. Yeah, like I said, I mean, uh, most of the guys know what they want, but sometimes yeah. you show up to a race, especially like a world championship, and they're not wearing their normal team kits. They're oh, wearing yeah. their... their uh, countries kits and so all the colors are different and so yeah I have to bring a pretty big bag of stuff to make sure I cover all the <laughs> all the bases on that one brilliant yeah driver step on it right big reveal I've got I didn't think the bag would be this big to be honest you told me there was a bag and I thought it would be maybe that so go on surprise me make me jealous okay show me what you got so in this bag is where I keep all of the glasses themselves yeah so there's everything yeah uh, I'm a pretty organized guy, especially if you bring this much product, it's, uh, you want to know where everything is and be able yeah. to find it quickly, especially if you've got multiple athletes at the same time coming at you and wanting stuff, then it becomes a bit disorganized. So um, basically I, I label them by the style of glasses, so you'll see Jawbreaker, Sutros, Radar EVs, um, and then within each glass I've marked uh, which colors I've put within the bags. Yeah, without the organization like that, it'd be mass chaos. Yeah. So a lot of work on the front end and it winds up paying off when you get here. So. Do you ever get any riders then who already know exactly what they want and they say, John, this is what I want, I've no messing about. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. it makes my life a lot easier too. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, put it aside already and prepackage it. So. Yeah. For instance, Jay Thompson, um, I know he wears Jawbreaker pretty religiously, yeah. um, and, and then obviously something a little green to match oh, his uh, South African kit, so. I've not seen these colors. Yeah, I, I almost uh, don't want to get them out, but, well, I do actually. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, there goes your nose piece. Nose, huh? yep. Almost like a Celeste color, that. Yeah, they call it Crystal Pop, so crystal it's pop. Uh, it's got the clear top on the, on the frame there, yeah. and then a little pop of some fun green, so, yeah. Cool. So that's all the glasses. glasses, and then in this uh, bag separately, I keep all of the lenses. Yeah. Um, so replacement lenses for different conditions based on the models again. So um, again, going back to my kind of OCD um, organizational yeah. skills. Yeah, I like this. I, uh, <laughs> I use, the, yeah, the, the girls at the office laugh at me, but I use um, a colored marker set that yeah. matches the actual color of the lens. So. Um, for instance, if it's a prism jade, I know that's a green lens, so I'll put it in a green marker 
Um, sapphire is a blue lens. Prism Low Light's a, a pink lens, so yeah. at least when they see the bag, it's easy for them to decipher what they're getting already, and it kind of saves some time on that, uh, and also lets me know which ones I have. Right, first visitor then, we got Tiffany Cromwell. Tiff, are you going to go fashion over function or function over fashion or a mixture of both? Because I know that you're a big fashion fan, there's no denying it, so what are you going to go for? I'm definitely going to do the mix. It has to look good, but at the same time we have to think about the weather conditions that we're going to deal with, so that's where the lens will be very important, but for sure I'll be going matchy-matchy. So these are actually um, some hand-painted ones that we did for the Tour de France. I can pull it off. These ones, I believe, you either need a small face or a big face to pull it off, not the in-between face. They, these came out around Tour of California. So, by the time this video goes live, you're probably going to be probably halfway through your race, I reckon. What's the feelings like in the legs? I'm guessing probably at about the time where we're hitting Loft House, which the legs will be burning. The first critical point of the race, you know, when all the action begins and, yeah. He said lots of pain, but good vibes as well, because I'm sure the atmosphere is going to be incredible out there. Yeah, so we're putting Prism Low Light in uh, just because the weather here in Harrogate's been not so nice. Um, and Prism Low Light's about as light as we have uh, that's not clear, so it still has some color to it that brings out some light and uh, kind of brings out the details on the road if the weather's bad as well. So. Yeah, just putting it in a flight jacket right now for Marco. Isn't this set up great? So John, Nathan the house has just arrived. Yeah. You know these riders pretty well. What do you reckon he's going to go for? Uh, my bet, knowing Nathan, is he's going to want a Sutro. Um, yeah. I have a Celeste Green one that he probably hasn't seen before. It's yeah. going to match his Australian kit. Uh, and then Nathan wears Jawbreaker pretty religiously. So I'd imagine between the two of those, that's uh, that's our bet. Yeah, right, let's put it to the test. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, probably I Jawbreaker think, uh, for the race. Jawbreaker race. here. Right, Nathan, when you're going for your colours, are you thinking outrageous or just to match up with your kit? So yeah, I, I either think that like really simple, like an all white or an all black or yeah. just like a... I, I like a lot of the, the sort of pastel-y colours, colourways that they've been putting out this year. So like a solid state looks really nice or I think you got to mix it up and do something a bit punchy. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> that's badass. Look at that. Yeah, that's good. Those we hand painted for the Tour de France jerseys. Yeah? So ah, those cool. are, yeah, custom for sure. One of my favorite pairs of Oakleys ever was, um, it was actually the first pair I was ever given. And I was hanging out with an American writer called Georgia Gould. Yeah. This was in 2009. Uh, Georgia comes up to me and she goes, I think you'll like this pair of glasses because she was sponsored by Oakley. And it was this like raging hot pink pair of Oakleys. And it totally stood out from the kit that I was wearing. That was the first like banging pair of Oakleys I ever had. And I still have them because they, for me, they have a bit of yeah. special meaning. Right, you know when you're going for, you choose your lenses based on the weather conditions. Yeah. What about your frames? It's like when you ride certain races, do you always go for certain frames or uh, not? You know, that's a good question. Yeah, I mean, lenses is obvious, but frames is a little bit different. Like I really like to use the Sutros uh, for training just because I feel like they give you like, more face cover as well, so I think it's better for sun protection. And I also feel as if less sort of light sneaks in through the side on a bigger pair of glasses. But um, you know, this this one was designed by Cavendish, and this one took a long time to develop to get the perfect sort of place where the frame starts, where the nose piece sits, so it's not visible. So for me, this one here is very highly engineered glasses, um, but purpose built for bike racing. And I think it also depends on your riding style. So I'm quite upright. So I never have the issue of actually seeing the frame on top. Yeah. But if you look at a rider like Niels Pollitt, he's actually, most of the time, he's actually quite far for, forward. So when he's actually looking sort of through the, the brow of his eye, if he has a frame, that's going to be pretty, pretty yeah. annoying. So he uses that style of glasses that is just the frame on the bottom. So definitely the frame um, 
is a massive factor of, of the performance of it, but it also comes down to the style of the rider and yeah. what they're using it for. So Michael, what are you going for? I'm going to uh, like for some nice glasses, obviously. So, but like a special color, so my family can actually easier to uh, easier see me, spot me. You know, like my grandmother doesn't have the best eyes. So it's like, Michael, wear some funny shoes or nice glasses. So funny shoes. yeah, that. yeah, could you, yeah. <laughs> actually, I have already now like you know dancing shoes on, like all silver. Yeah, yeah, wear them the yeah. Hopefully, I can change them into gold. Right, mate. I always seem to catch you at every race where you are, and you can't really hide. Um, but I've noticed you've got some pretty cool glasses. What's the story behind it? Because there's some engraving on them. Um, actually, it's probably best to wind it back to 2011 when I was with Team Sky. Um, we had World Hemophilia Day coming up, and I asked if I could, and we were racing in uh, Castilla Leon, and I asked if I could wear something red um, for the day, and then Team Sky got in touch with Oakley. Oakley created a one-off set of jawbones uh, in a colour they called blood red to sort of acknowledge the, that it's a blood condition. Um, and I got in a breakaway that day. Swifty won the stage, so it was it was great. And then after a bit of a sort of Oakley hiatus when I was at Marvy Star, um, I came back to Katusha and re-hooked up with Oakley and said, "Look, this happened back in 2011." and uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was good. I said, I've now got a charity dedicated to haemophilia called Little Bleeders. Can we, can we do something around that? And um, Oakley was super, super accommodating with it. We created, using their custom feature, um, a set of, a set of uh, jawbreakers, which is my, my glasses preference. Um, and managed to inscribe also Little Bleeders onto the lens. Um, and that's what I've been racing. That's what I raced on World Haemophilia Day this year, and I've raced in them ever since. So it's 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 nice. I think it's like it's a statement piece that really. And the more we talk about it, the more people will associate the glasses with um, with haemophilia. And and I'm just very grateful to companies like as big as Oakley to support what is actually a it's a rare disease. It's quite a small disease, but it's one that's. Um, obviously very close to my heart yeah there we go a day in the life of someone i've always wanted to see and what was actually fantastic was how excited all the riders were to get their new glasses let me know in the comment section which colors you would have decided on down there get involved and also remember to check out the gcn shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click the little notification icon so you get a little alert each and every time we put a video live and now for two more great videos how about clicking just down here and just down here